But unfortunately, our world, which is three quarters salt water and half the rest of it, mountain and desert, is looking like not big enough now. Humans already utilize about 30% more of the cropland, the fisheries, and the forestry than there is. We don't allow it to regenerate. We are over-utilizing it. And by 2050, we will need 200% of it. And if you were to deal with poverty, as I hope we all want to, we will need 400%. 400%. That's four worlds. Are we going to find at least one other planet? Or is it going to be, as the next slide shows, uh, this situation? on the right. It really isn't a debate whether sustainability is, is it important enough. You know, sustainability is not the option. The only option is how it happens. It either happens the gentle way through family planning, that's why I'm a specialist in family planning, or it happens the nasty ways, added to now by the climate change nasties of the excessive heat, hurricanes, flooding, and so on. And to me, that's the ultimate inconvenient truth, and I quote uh, Al Gore at that point. But the problem is, it's taboo, isn't it? It's a taboo subject. Uh, and uh, I find it the elephant in the room that nobody talks about. Wonderful that the elephant in the room in this room is being talked about. We, we discussed it. Don't have to be quite, sir. We're, we're maybe three seconds from midnight, but we're not there yet. First of all, please help me. Will you all undertake a little project today for me? And that is never from the 14th of October onwards, will you say those words up there? You will never find me in any in situation, except in the context of this slide, saying population control. So will you in the rest of this meeting, and from the rest of your life, never put those two words together? They have been so damaging. They instantly make your hair up, think of India in the, in the 1970s, and of China at the time present. Use any other way you'd like to say it. You'd like my phrase, population matters. Please don't say population matters. So, very nearly, my very last slide. It is true, we have done a great job. We've brought down average family size to two and a half. It's also positive that when you go to Africa, they may not have shoes, but they've all got mobile phones. Do you know that 60% uh, uh, of the world, uh, the number of mobile phone users per hundred, in other words, in, in the entire world, there are 60 uh, mobile phones for every 100 people, including the children it's, uh, and, and the old people. It's, it's amazing. So what an opportunity. Let's use the media, let's use the modern media, like mobile phones and, and so on, to deal with this problem of too many humans plus all of us wanting to do this. That's my last slide. <laughs> and that's my last final sentence. We are over-consuming and we are already to <coughs> Thank you very much. You're watching UNICEF Television. During a week-long forum on climate change, child delegates from over 40 countries engaged in debates, skill building, and negotiating sessions. They also learned to use online media tools to promote work against climate change. Strong of their newly acquired skills, the climate ambassadors signed a declaration that outlined the main concerns and recommendations shared by all. On the closing day of the Children's Climate Forum, a handful of youth ambassadors from all over the world presented the finalized declaration. We, as the world's children, want to be able to look forward to a cleaner, brighter, greener future and are prepared to do whatever it takes. And are prepared to do whatever it takes. Climate change is making education healthcare and child protection, nothing more than a chance gift, and violating our rights. It is time to act. Danish pop band Alien Beat Club firing off so very warm conditions today and for tomorrow Carol really the same areas in play for severe weather in terms of maybe some hail and very gusty winds tomorrow it's just not very progressive such a strange spring it really, it is. really is that's kind of the climate change we're seeing you know extremes kind of are ruling the roost and really what we're seeing more become the norm I know it makes me afraid for what next spring will bring because it might be like unnaturally cold who right. knows because that's not it this global warming is really kind of a misnomer global climate change so the colds are colder and the warms are warmer yes folks that's what it is it can be anything you want just blurt it out and that's what it is it can be 
too cold, it's global warming. No, actually now they changed it to climate change because climate change could mean what? Or infer what? That it's being caused by humans. Yeah, they, 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 uh, they hatched this little scheme up at the Club of Rome, and it's in order to declare war on the humans. And that's why you saw in the beginning, we we're talking about uh, with that uh, eugenicist talking about not using the word population control, right? Because it has a bad stigma. Well, why? Well, because most of the people in the rural areas are getting forced sterilized, as I covered in my recent videos. So, uh, you know, and what are some of these barriers? Well, it's called religion. It's called faith. It's called faith in God. That's what the barriers are. So. Um, and usually they'll go to the females first. I've, I've mentioned this so many times. That's why, you know, you had uh, the, um, the woman there at the climate conference, you know, accepting the document from the children, the, the children ambassadors who are being, who've been totally indoctrinated into this, as I put it, it's a religion. This is the new religion, and it's, it's, it's the green religion of uh, climate change and basically sacrificing yourself. So... And then you saw what? You saw the rock band kind of rolling it out, right? Uh, using entertainers to promote uh, the elitist, the globalist agenda. And then the two news anchors who were saying what? Oh, yeah, it's just really weird, isn't it? Just really weird. Yeah, it is weird because, you know, last month in March, we were being sprayed uh, by aerosols. They call it geoengineering, these scientists. that They're calling for it, but they're already doing it. Uh, they're actually creating um, a warming effect. They're creating the global warming. Uh, there's patents on it. Uh, the Hughes company uh, actually owns it. They've had it for a while. And um, if you don't believe me, the U.S. patent number is 5003186, stratospheric wells box seeding for the reduction of global warming. But it goes in there and actually says that it actually one of the side effects is it actually causes the warming. So just a bunch of nonsense, and that's why you had those news anchors saying, oh, it's just kind of weird. So as they were spraying us uh, really hardcore in the month of March, and it was... Um, uh, prematurely warm, right? Now I've, I've noticed all the trees around me uh, that were blooming, uh, certain buds are actually dead. Because of what? Oh, because of the cooling that's happened in March. And there's actually scientists, beside, uh, there, there's NASA scientists that have written the document, signed their names saying, please stop this nonsense and promoting global warming from NASA. We don't support it. It's a bunch of garbage. And there's actually scientists that are saying, we're due for a, for a uh, damn ice age. And you know what? Your governments aren't going to tell you that. They're not going to let you get prepared. They're just going to let you walk off a cliff in the name of uh, saving the Earth, saving the planet. And so this is what, you know, Earth Day, save the Earth. So kind of funny, too, that he said uh, that eugenicist was saying in the beginning about how in Africa they have more shoes than phones, right? They don't even have shoes, but they have phones. Well, you think that's by mistake? Besides tracking them, every single person, including in third world nations, it's also to sterilize them. That's what they do. They emit radiation, they sterilize them. They give them cancer and brain tumors. So heavy rain in East and April snowflakes for some. That's right. We had snow here uh, last week in the Midwest. So uh, moving on. Remember, that's global warming. It says here, Mexico preps shelters as volcano roars, spews ash. This was two days ago. And it goes on and says... Um, that a white cap volcano that loomed over Mexico City emitted a terrifying low pitch roar Friday and spewed uh, towers of ash and steam is a ventured, uh, vented pressure built up by a massive chamber of magna, magma beneath its slopes. It goes on and says authorities prepared evacuation routes, ambulances, and shelters in the event of a bigger explosion. It says here, uh, Popo, uh, as it's commonly known, has put out small eruptions of ash almost daily since a round of eruption activity began in 1994. A week ago, the eruption started growing larger, and authorities slightly elevated the alert level for people living nearby. The scientists that were interviewed said these uh, are figures that obviously alarm and concern us. He goes on, and he says that everyone needs to take this seriously, this buzzing, this uh, roaring, as uh, one farmer put it, he said it sounded like the roaring of the sea isn't normal. He added uh, that he believed about half the populace would be willing to evacuate while the rest would not or would want to stay. And of course, they watered it down and uh, put in some misinformation here uh, by saying what? It says, for others in Mexico, the eruption and the series of recent earth strong earthquakes are fueling speculation about what some believe to be the Mayan prophecy that the world will end in 2012. Of course, the Mayans never said that. They didn't say that. It said it would be the lifting of the veil. Um, it will be the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle, a circle. There is no end. But that's the disinfo, and that's that's put out by the powers that be so they can suck up your fear. And that's why the 
the good people down here that actually live in that area. They're not scared, dude. They go on and they say it's a godlike figure, and it basically says a 45-year-old street vendor said even if there was a major eruption that people wouldn't leave. So we know there's been a lot of um, earthquakes in that, especially along the Ring of Fire. Mexico has had some pretty big earthquakes uh, just recently. And then we saw, I saw, I saw this article from the 17th. Enormous great white shark uh, has been hauled up by the Sea of Cortez fishermen. The rare catch of such a large white shark, a 20 feet, 2,000 pounds, would be the longest ever recorded. So when they when they caught it, it was already dead. It goes on, it says, adult white sharks were once believed to be infrequent visitors uh, to the Sea of Cortez, but now it's believed that parts of the Gulf serve as a nursery for the species. I think I've actually heard um, someone say that the Gulf Stream was shutting down and so, and it was actually having an effect on the weather in, in the North America, the United States and that. Kind of interesting what uh, a shark expert says. While it's unusual that fishermen will land sharks that large, the occurrence of large shark, uh, white sharks is not uncommon. So a little double think, I guess, for you. Moving on here, first ever adult albino killer whale spotted in the wild. It says the reason for the whale's unusual pigmentation is uh, yet un unexplained and they'll usually uh, say that it's due to a genetic error or something like that, but I think the native culture believes that it indicates uh, that big changes are coming. And another unusual story is killer swan attacks and kills caretaker in Illinois. It says swans are certainly not normal, uh, normally thought of as killers, and it's tragic that the 37-year-old uh, died while checking on the birds. I believe it, they put the swans out there to, to handle some other uh, type of species that was uh, invading the area. And, uh, yeah, it just attacked him. I think I believe he drowned. But, uh, you know, one of the things is, is what? The queen owns the swans. That's right. It goes all the way back prior to 1100. They say even more than that, legally defined by the act of swans. And anyone who is not the king or given permission caught with a swan could face imprisonment. It said it was uh, derived from the belief that swans, especially cygnets and young swans, were tasty. But it could go on uh, actually deeper than that. It could be... Uh, basically something that the Illuminati holds dear to them and when one dies it means we know swan song is a metaphorical phrase for a final gesture or effort or performance given just before death or retirement let's not forget that it's the Queen's what 86th birthday as we head into the Olympics and uh, going through the Diamond Jubilee and back to climate change European Big Brother carbon sat or satellite surveillance aims to hunt down climate violators globally by 2017. It goes on and it says that human society will be reduced to color pixels and be constantly watched by a satellite launched and run by climate Eurocrats in Brussels. Carbon Big Brother is coming. Up to now, there has been no reliable way of monitoring the implementation of the Kyoto or Copenhagen treaties. The target is to hunt down environmental violators, said Dudok. Or we have UN seeks new powers to remake world a real sustainability summit. So sustainability is usually um, kind of intertwined with population reduction or control. The United Nations plan to use its upcoming UN conference on sustainable development or UN's Rio plus 20 uh, to mass a vast array of unprecedented new powers and literally reshape civilization, the global economy, and even people's According to official documents, all of it will be done in the name of transitioning towards a so-called green economy. I call it a death economy because in order to for a green economy to survive, uh, some people are going to have to go. This has almost nothing to do with environmental policy. UN official admits we redistribute world's wealth by climate policy. That was coming from an, an official from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. That's right, the tab for UN's Rio Summit, trillions per year in green taxes, uh, wealth transfers, and price hikes. It says here, among the proposals on how the challenges can and must be addressed, according to UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon, is more than $2.1 trillion a year in wealth transfers from rich countries, that's you guys, uh, to poorer ones in the name of fostering green infrastructure, climate adaptation, and other green economies. So I would wonder if climate adaptation uh, involves spraying of aerosols, i.e. chemtrails, weather modification. And green economy basically means shutting down coal plants, putting in uh, smart meters. So the cardboard in your uh, toilet paper roll is going to be slashed. And don't don't even think about actually making some kind of like alternative to using trees. You could use hemp, you could use something, right, besides trees. But these people, these groups, these eugenicists, they're on board with this new religion. They don't care about the planet because if they did, they'd stop pulsing it with microwaves, creating earthquakes, creating tornadoes, floods, droughts, and stop spraying the earth and its inhabitants.
This is GG and I'm Darko. Thank you.